What is up y'all? Welcome back. We are in the season of new beauty releases. We are coming up on spring. Everything is ready to bloom in every way possible. And so we are going to be talking about new beauty releases today. When I talk about new beauty releases, I call them tepid takes because I have an encyclopedic collection of makeup and I use it to swatch and to compare and to help people make informed buying decisions on my channel. And for that reason, I can usually make an excuse to buy something. I'm not huge on drugstore. I'm a lot bigger on luxury, prestige, everything in between. We also talk about color theory quite a lot as it pertains to putting your makeup on your face, trying to make it easy and fun. If that sounds good to you, then subscribe while you're here. Let's go ahead and open up trend mood and start scrolling. Wow. Okay. So I had already glanced at this before getting on camera, but new things have already been posted since then. That's how quickly things are coming out right now. The first thing on here past Sophie's pinned posts is available now eyeshadow palette, Mothership 8, Roman numerals. Divine Rose Two Hearts Desire Edition from Pat McGrath. I'm pretty sure I own, no, I don't own Divine Rose Two. I own Divine Rose One. But from what I'm gathering from just a cursory glance at the comments, this palette already exists. This isn't new. The thing that's new is that she's putting it in a gold palette. I mean, honestly, Sophie posts these things. She has to know that the comments are just gonna be an avalanche of distaste because the thing that people have come to be accustomed to with dedicating all of their kind of money and interest into collecting Pat McGrath's releases years and years ago was that she was innovating all the time. And we saw it on the Margiela runway, even on Bridgerton. I mean, it's not necessarily the most like thought provoking makeup, but it was beautiful. Like she's very capable and she's very creative and it's just not being reflected in her brand's identity right now. I don't think it's too much to say that people are salivating for a new release from her that is innovative. It truly is just like kind of a, a toxic relationship that they're in now with the brand because they just keep getting disappointed by like new release and it's not new. So I feel like Pat McGrath has kind of fallen out of the good graces of the beauty community. That doesn't mean that people aren't buying her palettes. I think that that's a big thing we don't talk about is like the difference between the beauty community and the collective opinion and how things are doing in reviews or in relation to other things that have come out or like the previous identity of the brand. And then like makeup consumers who don't watch YouTube or will watch the occasional YouTube video and what they want to buy. Because obviously someone's buying Tarte palettes, the mouse pads, you know? Someone's buying Too Faced palettes, someone's buying, you know, KVD, I don't know. And a lot of it might be coming from TikTok as well, but the opinion of the beauty community is that this is tired and done, but obviously someone's buying it and that's the reason that she's doing it. So I won't be buying this. I already know her formulas are lovely. I have two of her palettes, I don't need more. But I can highly recommend in Divine Rose One and Utopian Dream. I think I made the right choices. All right, next. This is the Rode phone case. And I have to admit, I feel exactly two ways about this, Hailey Bieber. One, ew, it looks kind of gross, doesn't it? Oh, I should scooch over, huh? Aha, I remembered before I got too far into the video so that I can actually, you know, put things here. So I am a little icked out by it because it's gray and it looks like a weird polymer slime that she has just, you know, obviously shoved the lip balm into. The other way that I feel about this is I misplace lip balms all the time. I spend as much, if not more time, hunting around my house for lip balms as I do hunting around for my phone. At least my iPad can find my phone. That's really what I mostly use it for, is I literally use my iPad to find my phone all the time. But lip balms, I have to kind of like happen back on them by luck <laughs> because I have so many things with pockets, you know? And like, I just always am like, oh, I'll definitely remember that I did that. No. So these things kind of like live ephemerally in my life. I'm like, oh, I remember that lip oil. Where did it go, you know? And so it does make sense. I wish it came in not space green gray. Like, can we get one that's like white or black or I don't know, like something committed. I just would like to see something that's not that strange in between sort of toothpaste color. That it's just, it, it's giving lime scale, you know? Like on the inside of your shower, like that's what, it, that's what it's giving to me. I'm sorry. It's just a really like not appetizing color. Not that they're trying to, well, they are kind of trying to appetize me because it's something I'm going to put on my mouth. They're all kind of flavored like something or scented like something. I mean, I guess the girlies are all gonna make it cool, but you know, as an aging millennial, it does look kind of goofy. But at the same time, I have to admit, I kind of like it, but I just, I wouldn't want it in that color. All right, this is such a throwback for me because I was a Glossier rep starting in 2017 before I even properly started my channel. Glossier was kind of like scouting for really small creators in the beginning, people who had like friendship level influence, not like influencer level influence. And I had made a few videos. I had a little bit 
bit of stuff on my Instagram, whatever, but they just kind of were like, do you want to be a rep? And I ended up just going gangbusters on that code. I made a lot of money for them kind of early on. Glossier and I became besties for a while. And then, I don't know, they had a lot of turnover at the company and forgot who I was, which is fine. I'm 30, almost 37 years old. I don't necessarily need to be the face of Glossier, not to say that older people can't use Glossier. It has beautiful formulas for mature skin, but it doesn't seem to be necessarily their target demographic. And they haven't done a really good job of like growing with the audience that they originally like defined millennial pink by the millennials. You know, they still are kind of trying to stay in this young demographic and people are like, who? So anyway, they're coming out with bronzers. They've had bronzers in the past that were called sun paints and I bought all of them. That was after they took me off their PR list inexplicably. I've never said a bad thing. I don't think I ever said a bad thing. I'm still, you can tell I'm kind of bitter about it. <laughs> do. They just push me out on an ice flow. But anyway, this time they're coming out in bronzer shades in their cloud paint formula. Now I have one real crystallized opinion here, and that is that the cloud paint formula was in its time extremely special. It was like the first time someone told us you don't have to wear that much makeup and it's still, they're very highly pigmented. I mean, good luck getting through one. I never actually finished a cloud paint because I had like a full set and I was just kind of using them here and there or whatever, but like a little tiny bit kind of it made me embrace the big blush look even more so than I had already because it's kind of hard to avoid with cloud paints. They're just a lot and they're beautiful. I think they're really, really pretty, especially because there were so many like balms. Cloud paint dries down all the way. It's really nice. It's a great formula. But since then, since, I mean, God, it came out in like 2015 or 2016, right? The cloud paints have been iterated on by a lot of companies. There were so many companies that tried to imitate the cloud paint for so many years and people have actually kind of eventually got there and maybe even eclipsed them and surpassed them in sophistication of formulas. So it's like, I know what this formula feels like. I know how it behaves. I will probably buy my shade in this just to see because when I bought the Pat McGrath bronzers, they did not translate to the insane love affair that I had with the blush without caution when she came out with her blushes. So the blush formula didn't translate as well to her bronzers. It might've been about the shades. It might've been about the fact that I just like a bronzer that's not the same formulas my blush. I don't know, but it just didn't click for me. And I would like to see if maybe the cloud paint becomes like a bronzer formula that lends itself well to my routine. So they're at Sephora now. It's $22. You know what I mean? I'll do it. I'm, I'm going to buy that probably. I might buy two. Just to see. I just want to see. I just want to know. I just have to know. Y'all, I want you to know that if you're ever frustrated with me because I run my mouth so much, trust me, when I'm editing, I'm frustrated with me too. I'm like, when are you going to shut the you know what up, Khaki? The amount of stuff that ends up on the cutting room floor, half of the video, easily. We love to see it. LYS, a beautiful black owned brand at Sephora, is coming out with the higher standard cream glow blush sticks. So the higher standard matte blush stick, blush sticks, blush, they were just blushes. They're cream blushes in a triangular pan are amazing. They're great. The colors are great. The formula is again, like a very sophisticated kind of formula that works beautifully on like every skin type because it's not dewy. These are fascinating because they're shimmery and I don't know how I feel about it. <laughs> I don't know how I feel about it yet because the swatches are quite metallic looking at $20 each, which is not crazy because like, I mean, the drugstore is putting things out for $20 at this point. I could see me picking up a couple of these just to know because I like LYS as a brand regardless. And I know that a lot of their stuff is meant for more oily oil control needing skin types, but they do a good job of making their pigmentation levels applicable to a lot of skin tones. And so I did find that the higher standard blushes that I bought, the two shades that I bought back in the day were delightful. Like they were wonderful on my skin. I didn't feel like I was working against something that was over pigmented for me. So I could see picking up that really funny, like toasted mauve color and the coral maybe, the, the, not the deeper coral, but the medium coral, just to see, just to see if a metallic blush like that would work for me. But I think that it's really cool that they did this. It does seem new and different. And again, it's one of those things where it's like, I want to see what they have in mind for a blush that looks that shimmery. When it gets on the skin, is it going to blow my mind? Because I've definitely put on like metallic lipsticks before and been like, ew. And then I put a gloss on top of them. And I'm like, 
Oh. Sometimes things can change your mind. You just, that's why we play the game. I'm really not even like skipping any right now. They're all kind of interesting either to talk about whether I want them or to talk about why I don't. So this is the new Disco Crush Eye and Face Sparkle. So we're back in the late 90s, early 2000s with somebody saying that we should put sparkles somewhere else on our face than our eyes. And more power to you, put some sparkles on there. But it's been a long time since someone like Too Faced has just marketed something like that. So the most innovative glitter formula you've ever used. Those are bold words, Too Faced. A shifting shimmer formula that feels weightless and looks ultra luxe with iridescence and with iridescence, the intensifies and light hits from different angles that applies with just one swipe, delivering maximum dazzle with no fallout and sparkle that just doesn't quit. The thing that it kind of bugs me here is like this one color. Like it's really talking a big game. It's coming in hot to be like, this product is so innovative. This product is so new to you that we're making one color. What? I think that that's a color that's gonna show up on everybody, but if it's such a phenomenal formula and we're supposed to put it on our eyes, why did you put out one? Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe maybe this is all Sophie had at the time, but like it does look like, yeah, heart eyes, shifting warm rose gold sparkle. Like I'm not anti-glitter. I'm glitter tolerant, but like, why is it, why is it only one? Okay, Danessa Myricks, the queen of beautiful textures, says a closer look, new additions to the Yummy Skin family. Yummy Skin Mattifying Water Powder Serum. She loves to mix some words together that don't belong together and she means it. I know she means to do that. She's like, it's a water, it's a powder and it's a serum. Don't get it twisted, I said what I said. All right, Danessa, I'm listening. I'm going to pay attention to what you said because no one else could say water, powder, serum and have any of us buy into it except Danessa Myers because we're like, she definitely knows what she's talking about. So with niacinamide and hyaluronic acid, big niacinamide has got everybody into chokehold. I don't know what's going on there. Everybody wants them some niacinamide in their products. I'm like, what? Why? Someday we're gonna find out that like, people are getting niacinamide poisoning or like you can actually have too much. It's in everything. Mattifying water to powder serum that primes, absorbs shine and visibly refines skin with comfort matte complex. Do I need that? No. Does it sound awesome? Yeah. Absorbs oil all day, don't need that. Without an over drying effect, translucent and undetectable on all skin tones, it preps your skin for the best matte makeup results while com combating acne prone skin concerns like oiliness, shininess, and large pores. And then there is the Yummy Skin Moisture Repair Balm Serum. Moisture Repair Balm Serum. With hyaluronic acid and squalane, natural balm to serum intensely hydrates, repairs, soothes dry skin, visibly transforming the skin barrier by targeting tightness, flaky, dullness and irritation. Those sound like they do two different things. I saw her apply them both on her face at the same time. And you know what? That's fine. Sounds like they would strike a nice equilibrium, but that second one sounds really appealing to me. Let's hear that again. Intensely hydrates, need that. Repairs and soothes dry skin, have that. Visibly transforms the skin barrier by targeting tightness, I would like that. Flakiness, dullness and irritation. I would like anything that helps with that. Moisture repair complex. You can moisture repair complex all you want over here. We need that. We absolutely need that. So yeah, I could see myself picking that up. It's $38, the other one is $36. So yeah, go to another creator who has oily skin to see about that mattifying water powder serum, which is just incredibly fascinating. Just those, all those words together. It sounds like the final boss of primers, but that one won't be reviewed by me because that would be silly. That would be silly. My skin's too dry. Oh, available in Europe. I know I get so bratty about that. Like everything's always available in the US. By the way, I just, I just ordered the Louboutin fetish fluid, the, the new foundation. I have no idea what shade I am. I just was like, I don't know, I was, I was gonna pick one. Tom and I tend to be skin twins, but I knew that they were going to order the next lighter shade, the, like between the two that I thought could match us. I knew they were gonna go for the lighter one. And so I went for the deeper, warmer one. And so you will have kind of like a tag team in terms of reviews on that because we have different skin types, different wants and needs out of our foundation products. And we both bought it at the same time. So that'll be fun. That'll be fun. Anyway. Welcome to my TED talk. Available now in Europe, 2024 is another powerful year of blushes. This is just as in my last video I said, nobody's coming out with blushes right now. Sophie begs to differ. This is the new terracotta blush from Guerlain. They love to call everything terracotta. It's kind of like the naked palette or other things that I can't think of right now. Formulated with 90% ingredients of natural origin. They keep doing that with it. They keep saying that with the terracotta. Reveals cheekbones. Reveals cheekbones. Well. They're either there or they're not. With a delicate color evoking the freshness that rises to the cheeks after an escapade in the great outdoors. Fjords, 
She wears cheeks, has a light and airy texture, long wearing and comfortable formula in shades light pink, deep coral, light coral, deep nude, light nude, deep pink. So they made a light and deep version of three colors. Kind of like what I did. I did light, medium, deep in two colors for my summer abroad collection, but go off your law. I'll just be over here giving everybody my ideas. I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding. No one knows who I am. No one knows who I am. I'm kidding. These look lovely. The thing that I was going to say is that I have had, I think, two different terracotta bronzers in the career of my channel, and I think I returned both of them because they were just like apricot orange or just all kinds of wrong. The colors were just bananas. This looks kind of like you can't screw it up. I would buy the fair version of all three of them, and gosh darn it, I just love that tortoiseshell packaging that they put everything in. I think that I will definitely be doing that, especially because I decluttered so, so many blushes in my last declutter that like I kind of need to infuse, I need an infusion of blush in my, in my stash, so that's how my mind works. It really looks lovely. I definitely want that one. Coming soon to other countries in the stores. Meh. I, we'll see. It's one of those things that could be like tomorrow or it could be the thing that we are looking for and waiting for for the rest of the year and it never comes. The Armani blushes took so long to come out and they were actually worth the wait, but that Chanel balm, we ended up having this instead in the United States and I love it, but I still want to know what that big pot of like Becca under eye corrector is. I want to know. I haven't gotten my buns over to Europe lately, but if I do, I'm going gonna pick one up. Super Goop is dropping the new Protect Tint. Talk about another brand that I used to be on their PR list. I have a contact there, but I haven't talked to them in a while. And then I went to message them on Instagram and it was like, you can't message them because they don't follow you. I was like, womp womp khaki. <laughs> they don't follow me? Not that I, like, I expect them to, but they follow like all my friends. I was like, well, I used to be an affiliate with y'all. What the heck? Anyway, there's turnover at companies. I've been at this, this is my seventh year. So like, it is what it is. I haven't focused on Supergroup in a long time. Either way, it's happening. What a way to start 2024. Supergroup is dropping the new Protect Tint Daily SPF Tint, an effortless lightweight and cushiony skin tint meets powerful sun protection with light buildable coverage and a natural finish. This blendable skin tint was created to leave skin looking immediately smooth and even while delivering effective SPF 50 protection and has ectuin, hyaluronic acid infused clay, wow, and zinc oxide. Let's see, how many shades are we? 14 shades, $44. They are an expensive company. Warm, neutral, neutral, cool, golden, cool, golden. We've got one olive and then one fair neutral peach. Ooh, it looks like I'm gonna have a tough time getting a shade in this. Effortless, lightweight, cushiony skin tint. I'm gonna still review it, but I am curious to see how much coverage there is because obviously if there's a little less coverage then we can definitely get away with something being flexible in terms of undertones. If you swatch all of my foundations next to each other they look completely different from each other. You know I get away with wearing a lot of different colors. I will be picking up the Super Goop skin tint because I just need to know and it's relevant but I will be also interested to see what the coverage level is because that's going to matter in terms of the flexibility of this shade range being only 14 shades. Okay so Jess Hunt Refi is coming out with a new mascara. I am not appetized by new mascaras right now. I got burnt out on trying a bunch of new mascaras last year. I really tried a lot, a lot of like normal mascaras, regular wash off mascaras, not waterproof and not tubing. I'm a tubing mascara girly. But anyway, what ended up happening last year, and this is completely personal and entirely my fault, but I ended up giving myself an eye infection, like a pretty gnarly one, because I don't have the discipline to wash mascara out of my eyelashes diligently. I'm, I'm kind of a toddler. And so tubing mascara is the ideal formula for me because it's either there or it's not. It doesn't leave residue. You don't have to rub your eyes with something to get it out from between your eyelashes. It just comes off and I'm a huge fan. It's not for everyone because it's heavy and not everybody wants heaviness on their lashes. It's not particularly great at holding curl typically because it's just a heavy kind of formula, but I think that it's fabulous. I use the Thrive Brown one and I am also going to be using Rudy's. So I don't think that this is a tubing mascara, so I probably won't be trying this, but I will hand it to her. She knows how to make her own custom components. This never feels like it's just off the shelf, private labeled makeup. I feel like she's always innovating and her products are really well thought out. Whether or not they appeal to me is hit or miss, but she has a very strong point of view. I think I'm the last person in the world who has not tried these Summer Friday lip balms. It says, update swatches, they're coming out with a birthday cake one. I mean, what they're doing is they're just, I'm sorry. 
I'm sorry, I'm gonna cast aspersions. They're just copying Glossier. But then again, I forget that I'm old sometimes and that the Glossier birthdaybomb.com doesn't exist in its previous form anymore because they changed the formula and it came out in 2018, 2017. Good Lord. Seven years ago. There were people learning their times tables in 2017 who are being advertised to to buy makeup now. They don't know from GlossierBirthdayBalm.com. They know Summer Fridays now and that's totally fine. I mean, you know, maybe I'll pick one of these up because Lord knows I like to lose lip balms. So the more the merrier, you know? It actually increases the likelihood that I'll stumble upon one in my house. I think I'm also the only person who's not on their PR list because I just have like never said anything particularly like so winning about them. I'm just like, eh. Another brand that went from, you know, accusations of white supremacy to having, what's her face? Uh, Sophia Richie, that's her name. You know, they hire her because again, there were people learning their times tables in whatever year, maybe that would've been 2020, when nude sticks got under fire for that stuff. And again, I'm just reporting the news. And it's not news, I'm reporting the olds. I'm not like forming my opinion based on these things, but like people would have skewered me if I reviewed nude sticks in 2020 or 2021. But there's just this new generation of people on the internet who don't know from 2020 nude sticks scandal who are like, well, Sophia Richie, like LFG, you know, I will buy that because I wanna look like her. And honestly, she's lovely. <laughs> she has great style. She always looks put together. She's got beautiful skin and thick hair. And like, I don't know who wouldn't want to buy what she's selling kind of thing. So I guess more power to him. I'm just still reeling from the fact that I'm like, wait, are, so we're, people want me to buy this now? Cause before, you know what I mean? <laughs> now, now, <laughs> this is such a layup. I don't even feel like I'm being creative criticizing this, but Dyson is like making some changes to their blow dryer. It says new supersonic R? Supersonic R, cause it looks like a lowercase R. <laughs> She couldn't put together that father figure was a pun on fig being the main note, but I immediately put together the fact that this thing looks like a lowercase r and that's why they're calling it the, the supersonic r, r, nar, r, nar. Supersonic hair dryer is getting some upgrades. Oh, okay, it says it. The, the shape is different, now more resembling a lowercase r. All right, fine, but I figured it out on my own. Let the record show. It's 20% smaller, 30% lighter with intelligent heat controls that measure air temperature in an aim to prevent heat damage against hair. Comes with five attachments that contain heat, heat shield technology where the surfaces of the attachments stay cool throughout use. Also includes three airflow levels and four heat modes, including a constant cold mode. It's launching during New York Fashion Week and looks like it will be available for professionals only, including celebrity hairstylists and salon owners. Well, I have a cosmetology license that I let lapse. It's fine, but still, I could still kind of pro probably try and leverage that. I don't know. I just think that it's funny that they are making a blow dryer look more like a vacuum. I saw a meme, I think it was just like, I just love Dyson because they're like, air, that's our thing, air. We're gonna make it hot, we're gonna make it cold, we're gonna make it blow, we're gonna make it suck, we're just gonna make some air, you know? Here, have some very expensive metabolized air. And that's what they've done here, but like, I really feel like them being a vacuum company and then making a blow dryer, like anybody coming from outer space would be like, you don't say. You, they were a vacuum company first, really? Gosh. I'd never know. Now you know. And God, what a terrible color. I'm sorry. Like, not a, like I don't think royal blue in and of itself is a terrible color. I just think what a weird color story that they went royal blue and like light coral. Like, what a weird calamine lotion, uh, a children's building block kind of combination. I don't know. I'll be honest, before they said it was for professionals, in my mind I was like, I might buy that. That sounds kind of neat. But now that I, I probably won't. But you know it'll come to Sephora. They want their money, right? I mean, Dyson is not gonna gatekeep. They're gonna gatekeep it long enough that it builds a bunch of hype and then they're gonna release it. And they'll probably release it in like three colorways and it'll be drop dead gorgeous. You know, they get their money, they do. I think that they introduced an entirely new area of the market that said, this part of your routine needs to be wildly expensive. You're getting more for your money ad infinitum. Like it's, you know what I mean? The more money you spend, the more you're getting and there is no limit to it, you know? And they're just like, keep buying our products. And so they just keep making them. Don't they? They just keep making them. I will say, I adore Ariana Grande. I've never in my life been interested in Wicked as a musical. Like, not that I'm disinterested in it. It's not like Hamilton, 
but I've never been like, yeah, I want to do that. Like, I don't know. I live pretty close to New York City. I've never gone. I mean, I've never gone to see Wicked, but I saw the preview for Wicked with Ariana Grande and that other lovely girl. She's been in a lot of stuff that, you know, is playing the Wicked Witch. And let me tell you, they've got me hook, line, and sinker. It looks great. And she's just so darn talented and so adorable. I love her. But I will say, like, I don't, I still don't understand the vision of her makeup brand. Oh my God, I just remembered I bought the Tarte concealer and it never came. Maybe it did come and it's just somewhere. Oh no, I'm the worst. I for sure bought that and it was like $40. Things just fall through the cracks, don't they? My God. Anyway, I was just thinking about her concealer and then y'all got to go on that ADHD ride with me. But yeah, she's coming out with blushes and bronzers, which if you had gun to my head and said, did she have blushes and bronzers already? I would have been like, yeah, probably. It's fine. She's got so much money. I'm sure she's making her money and this is drugstore kind of stuff anyway. And like the shade range looks pretty good. Looks pretty good because you got some contours in there, I think. But I don't know, I'm probably not gonna buy that. I'm not gonna buy it. New additions to the Good Apple family, speaking of KVD Vegan Beauty. Good Apple Bronze and Sculpt Duo. Good Apple Blush Balm Duo. I recognize this as a... Hold please. Hi. Yeah. There are people in my house. Don't mind the commotion, it's fine. I know they're here. <laughs> So this strikes me as a use of the Good Apple name, kind of like I was talking about before, like Naked and other things that I couldn't remember. Good Apple is something that went viral, the foundation did for KVD Vegan Beauty, but it's in the same delivery system, it's in the same packaging, it's definitely supposed to invoke good feelings that we might have gotten from the Good Apple before, or at least viral feelings that we got from the Good Apple before. I don't think I'm gonna be buying this. Even though KVD Vegan Beauty has rebranded, I just don't like what the brand stood for. They haven't done a good enough job of rebranding, they just kind of went like hands-on off, she's not here anymore, but like, eh, the, the infractions were a little too offensive for me. And so that's just not where I want to spend my money. Okay. Melt Cosmetics. Melt is one of those brands that is just so hit and miss for me. Like I loved their blush lights and then they expanded on the blush lights, I think. And I loved that formula, the cream blush lights, but like their eyeshadow palette, not really. And that powder last year, that glazed powder, I don't, I still don't understand what that was supposed to be. But now they're coming out with two thingies here. We have the new Petite Stacks, Warm Browns, Neutral Browns, pen okay, the other ones are gel liners. So the gel liners are in really pretty little pots and then the eyeshadow stacks are in cardboard. Now, Lawless tried to do this back in the day, back when I was reviewing Clean Beauty back in 2019. I liked the glitters okay, the formula was whatever, but what I found with this particular packaging style is that the pans tend to be kind of unstable and the formula tends to kind of shift when you put your finger into it and it, it cracks really easily. I would be interested to see if that's what's going to happen with these. Obviously we like to see something that is sustainable, biodegradable, what have you in terms of packaging and this is innovative and they are really pretty color stories, like really pretty color stories. I don't, again, love their eyeshadow formula, but I could get down. I could get down on that peach situation. That looks really, really gorgeous, which I guess they're calling the warm browns. Yes. So there's the warm browns and the cool browns. I would be so down on those warm browns because the, just the peach that's in there is just gorgeous. And that brown looks like a really good bedroomized brown. I might buy this. Honestly, it's $30 for five eyeshadows that are in individual pots, which is pretty cool. And then the gel liner, I have no idea how they perform, but they look really pretty. I'm not sure that either of those colors necessarily appeals to me. So yeah, I think it would just be the eyeshadows, but like a third $30 investment and a review. I think that that would be cool. They look really cool. I would just, I, I hope they work from a packaging standpoint, you know? Speaking of Lawless, she's got new shades for the lips. These must be just selling like hotcakes. I do like this formula, the forget the filler formula. It's just sticky. It's just a lot. It's really syrupy and it does a good job. I'm pretty sure it's plumping. Forget the filler, plumping, line smoothing, tinted lip balm. It is, it's good and it doesn't irritate the lips. I found it to be really lovely. I think mine just expired or whatever. Maybe I'll pick another one up, but they also have the forget the filler lip plumper line smoothing gloss. And Lawless has always been priced really well. They're $26. It's not anything outrageous for something that they carry at Sephora. And these colors look really, really pretty. I really like Whisper. Annie can never resist putting out like a Barbie pink. And now we got like kind of a Barbie lilac in here. That's just 
her identity and I love that she sticks with that. But these do, whoo, maple sugar nude, these look really pretty. I might have to revisit this formula, try the balm formula as well, because A, it's a low buy-in and B, I just think that this is kind of an exciting iteration on them. And C, you're never gonna hear me say a bad word about a product that's like glossy and sparkly and plumping, you know? As long as it's not like pH color adjusting and it doesn't turn my lips all red from irritation, I'm probably gonna like it. I'm an easy audience in that sense. Okay, well, I can't not talk about this because we have the Chanel Spring Collection 2024 and it has a split blush pan that is like rose on one side and coral on the other and then a corresponding eyeshadow quad and then there's a highlighter and another eyeshadow quad and they look really lovely. Not particularly nuanced, but we're also talking about springtime here. This spring is not the time for muted, desaturated colors all the time. It's usually pastels and bright things. Oh, is that a new Bohm Essential? Oh, the bomb. She wrote bomb essential in mermaid glow. <gasps> Hindash, if you see this before I do, pick me one up. I will pay you about it. <laughs> when does it come out? Coming soon. Yeah, I need to find out when that comes out. I don't know if I need the eyeshadow palettes, but I need the blush and I need that bomb essential in mermaid glow. I need it. I just need it on principle, on Chanel principle. Fleur is really cranking out the perfumes, aren't they? It took me a while to get my hands on Mood Ring and they've already come out with Strawberry Letter. I hope that I receive this in PR. If not, I will smell it and maybe buy it or just bother them until they send it to me because I have loved everything that they have put out lately. I love Father Figure, I love Mood Ring. <sighs> Oh, if you haven't gotten to smell it, it's so good. Like you don't think you're gonna like something that's that sweet and fruity and it's just fantastic. It's really, really good. It's like sexy somehow. So anywho, I would like to smell strawberry litter because I just trust them at this point. It's like when you trust a chef to take ingredients that you don't usually like and make them good. I trust Fleur to interpret scents in a way that I'm going to like them. I'm just a big fan. And I think the last thing I'm gonna talk about here are the new PhD hybrid lip glazes from House Labs. First of its kind skincare infused lip plumping glaze with burn free, love to hear it, lip plumping after two weeks of continuous use. So yeah, that's the whole thing. When they come out with nuanced colors like this, like Gucci did, and then you put them on and your lips turn red, what's the point? You can't see the color anymore because your lips are so red and like it's so tingly. Ugh. I thought that since these were in the House Labs packaging, that these were just colors of like something that had already existed and I saw Hannah Louise Post and like really not like them. She said that the taste was really bad. And I am assuming that based on the fact that it's new, <laughs> that these are new. This is a new entire formula. I just don't know enough about House Labs to know that, but the colors, Duke, the colors, they look amazing. That one second from the left and even the one all the way to the left, absolutely beautiful. Like they look really incredible. Yeah, I think I would pick up at least one of these and they come out. February 7th, I'm just gonna be spending a lot of money because February 7th already happened, so I'm gonna buy them. Yeah, and that's all she wrote for this one, y'all. I think I worked back to where I last spoke about and there are just some tantalizing releases this time, aren't there? Like, I'm really excited about some of this stuff. I think that that was the theme of the last one. I was like, I'm actually excited about new releases. There's something about the fact that like iron sharpens iron, that the audience kind of continues to improve the quality, the overall quality of makeup in the industry because our expectations keep going up and because there is so much makeup, so they have to compete. We were getting like um, shrinkflation there for a while. I feel like the prices are going down a little bit in some cases and we're getting more innovative colors. We're getting more grunge and I just love to see it. So yeah, I just spent a lot of mental money that time and I intend to probably review all of those things for y'all. So look for to that. Go back to the middle khaki. And I'm going to try and hunt down that Tarte concealer because I definitely think that it came and I just misplaced it. And we're long overdue for reviewing that. So anyway, I could be more organized, but life happens. Life just be out here life in, don't she? I hope that y'all enjoyed this. If you did, it really helps me out if you give this a thumbs up, pass it on, pass it around to people that you think would appreciate the chaos and the information and the fun of it all. And if you're new here and you haven't yet subscribed, please, Subscribe, just subscribe, just subscribe to our channel. I'd like to hit 100,000. All my friends have. What the heck, man? <laughs> anyway, I love y'all so much. I'll put a video up here that I think you're going to enjoy if you liked this one. And uh, I will hopefully see y'all in the next one. Bye.